Blockchain Hub Graz is one of, uh, I think, seven now. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, at least seven. There is one in Zurich, so I can update the slide yet. Um, so the Blockchain Hub network is, is a kind of open network of, of uh, several blockchain hubs. And uh, this is uh, meant as a non-profit uh, explaining uh, blockchain to non-techies and, um, and connect organizations and networks. So basically, it's like the same story uh, since it started. Uh, so here in Graz, we were uh, one of the first three uh, of the blockchain hubs, so Brussels, Berlin, and, and, and Graz. And, uh, and um, yeah, we kind of worked together for about a year until we uh, decided to have a couple more uh, blockchain hubs in the network. And basically the things what we do are staying the same or stay the same all the time. Um, of course, during the last two years, a lot of things have changed and uh, there is kind of a lot of movement in what is actually uh, happening and what those people which you see in the pictures are uh, currently doing, uh, but that can be done in chit chat afterwards. So, regarding the meetup uh, here in Graz, uh, I updated the, the numbers, so we are still part of the five largest uh, blockchain <coughs> and Bitcoin meetups in Austria. Uh, so we have currently 384 blockchains in the meetup, uh, so I'm happy that I can welcome so many people here today. Uh, I hope uh, well, I, I should have opened the waiting list, so because we didn't have so many people on the waiting list so far. Um, but I need waiting. A couple of you uh, have been on the waiting list and still came. So um, therefore, we opened a little bit more space so to accommodate you. Uh, in Vienna, of course, the meetups are uh, a lot bigger uh, from the numbers of people registered, uh, and uh, if you go there, you will see okay, well, there are. 100 people and so on. So uh, basically what you can have here is a more intimate kind of chit chat with somebody uh, later on when you do the networking and, uh, and well, to my taste in, in Vienna they are partially just too big uh, that you really get a decent conversation of those. So I prefer actually this kind of size. So therefore I'm, I'm hesitating to move it to another place when more and more people are coming. Um, so, just uh, to give you some information uh, regarding what you can look up, because what we can't do in this kind of setting is actually that uh, basically giving an introduction what blockchain is. Uh, so, there is a, uh, we did something for the widgets come up um, and uh, described uh, blockchain technology, some basics, and uh, some kind of outlook. So, if you're going on on this webpage from Ubit Steiermark, Get Know How, uh, you can register there and there are full PDFs you can download, you can read into those. Uh, and most of it should be still kind of valid, so it was uh, written in a way that it kind of is, is, is valid for a longer time. Um, you can also go at the YouTube channel, so there is a, a YouTube channel, so therefore we are uh, recording this one today. Uh, so that, that also others can look up the meetups and you find there the blockchain startup contest which happened in 2016 and a couple of other things on that channel. And uh, also if we, if we have slides, we also provide them uh, on SlideShare. Uh, so you will get uh, also something uh, there from uh, today's main talk uh, from the slides. Deck. At least I hope so that Peter will provide it. Good. Um, yeah, so that was the intro. Um, what you will hear today uh, is something I will present. I will present to your artists uh, and uh, as a kind of double head role. So I I'm here for uh, blockchain hub crowds as well as the left hand collective. Um, and, um, and after that, uh, we will hear uh, 
from uh, Peter about uh, blockchain, uh, a real life blockchain use case. So this is something we are all kind of looking for. Where is blockchain applied? You know, not just in kind of cryptocurrencies, but also other settings. And uh, I saw a presentation uh, from him uh, a couple of months ago, <clears throat> and there um, he had a nice distinction uh, how you can split up the whole kind of complex topic uh, of blockchain and consensus and kind of those kind of things. So it's 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 easier to digest, uh, I think, in the way he presents uh, the whole topic. Um, yeah, so. Talking about artists, so I, I will give you a 15 minutes intro and then you have 15 minutes uh, free to question me uh, or make an invitation. And, uh, and after that, uh, you will have uh, 30 minutes uh, presentation, 15 minutes again, uh, quite QA. And after that, basically networking. Uh, I hope the beer is sufficiently much. It's it, it, it's hard to say if we can get through with the beer. Um, but um, please use the networking and uh, and and if you have questions regarding how things work, how things uh, uh, you need something explained, then please approach somebody beside you and ask if they may be the expert you are looking for. Good. So, uh, because I said I'm, I'm, I'm also here for, for other things, uh, I want to introduce to you the Left Hand Collective. The Left Hand Collective is a cooperative uh, with currently 34 members, a couple more in the waiting line. Uh, we founded last year uh, in July, so a lot of in here are, are also members uh, of that cooperative and what we are doing is, is actually uh, doing projects, working on uh, on the topic of education, IT education, and have uh, the, the mindset of shared economy kind of setting internally as well as externally. And uh, and currently, because what we want to do is is very much connected with blockchain topics, and that brought us to that point. Uh, that we uh, said uh, we want to build something our own, and that's the thing I'm going to present to you uh, for the first time, because basically so far uh, very a very limited uh, number of people have have seen something about that. So it's hard to move the mouse around here. So um, artists. So Artis is a new blockchain, so it's a completely from uh, well, self-standing blockchain and uh, usually you are asking what kind of technology is behind and uh, this is found here, a little bit small for you to read but I can tell you it's a Ethereum based, uh, code based blockchain. So. Uh, what we're building upon is uh, is mainly Ethereum code base, and uh, the important thing here is that um, there must be, in my opinion, always a, a reason why you would build a new blockchain uh, system uh, when you already have some others out there, and um, the the interesting idea <coughs> which came up was uh, so-called streams and that's one of the functionality put into uh, that new system and that makes it kind of necessary that uh, basically you can't just take an existing blockchain system and say okay let's integrate that. So what's a stream? A stream uh, you can imagine as something like a stream of money in the same way as you know a stream of water, of uh, kind of a, a river. So if you're starting a stream, it's flowing from one point to the next point. So if you're taking, uh, taking artists, artists will be able to start the stream from one account to the other account and it can be running basically indefinitely. 
So you're starting a flow of money from one account to the other one, and you're just defining the, the magnitude of the flow. So you're saying uh, you have that many coins per day. So you're introducing actually a new unit, how you can kind of describe money flowing from one account to the other. So consider it like, uh, I don't know the English term, a Dauerauftrag, but just remove that kind of, you do it every now and then. You do not do a discrete kind of a transfer or a transaction to the other account, but it's kind of, you start it once and it's flowing all the time. Take into consideration like, um, like you're paying your energy bill. You're paying like 50 euros a month, you start it with like, uh, like that kind of flow rate and it just kind of flows all the time and you don't have to do anything uh, in between. And, uh, and basically it will run all the time. And the interesting part is the other account can use it immediately. So they can immediately start using that funds which come into their account. Oops, sorry. Um, so that's for, for the stream. So that's one, one of those things what uh, basically are uh, open a very interesting kind of functionality. I will come to that a little later. The other one, what we were uh, discussing very intensively was uh, that of how coins are distributed. So you might have seen uh, a couple of, of, of press releases where they say, okay, well, I don't know, 98% of Bitcoins are anyway in the hands of a few or something like that. So basically, uh, if you look at crypto systems, usually the coins are distributed extremely uh, condensed for a couple of, of accounts or addresses, whatever kind of system you have. Um, and, uh, and if you look at the kind of how transactions are happening, uh, it's kind of limited to a very few bunch of companies and uh, not so kind of this kind of great system which was envisioned by Satoshi basically in the paper. So having a peer-to-peer -peer cash system where everybody is paying everyone uh, on that kind of system. Um, so what artists will do different here is actually the coin distribution. So the coin distribution uh, will be for a main part, will go to humans. So humans which are registered in that kind of system. So currently, uh, this is kind of a difficult task and it is definitely a difficult task because for the ones which you, you know about it, it's kind of a easy to do a civil attack. So basically somebody's creating a lot of identities and they are collecting a lot of kind of cash inflows. And, uh, and uh, we need to come up or we have some idea how we are going to start and we have a couple more ideas how we are going to scale it that we get unique human identities in an anonymous way into that system so that they can get coins. At the very end, the distribution uh, will be 75% or a little bit more even of all coins will go to humans. And, um, and uh, the others are like foundation uh, and, and, and early supporters and, and those kinds of things. So, but most of the coins will actually go there. Um, so in the very beginning it will be 3 billion coins. And uh, at the kind of final stage it will be 21 billion coins. And um, this, this is um, kind of opening a, a kind of a big, big kind of portion of people actually to uh, use services which run on that platform. So just imagine you have a lot of people registered in that kind of system uniquely. So somebody who is building up a service on top of that kind of system can rely on that those people actually have some base coins, some base currency which they need for paying the transaction fees and can use their own tokens for their particular service 
what they're kind of offering. They can be sure that there are like, I don't know, whatever, 10,000, million, 200 million, whatever kind of people in that system, but can rely on you have that many identities and they're not fake identities uh, in that kind of system. So, this is uh, the distribution model. Um, let's see if I, yeah, because that's usually a sensitive topic. So if you're saying we are having 3 billion coins in the very beginning and 21 billion coins at the very end, everybody kind of knows, okay, well, that's kind of inflation, right? So you have inflation in the system, so if you have inflation, that's bad because it's devaluing the coins. So what we, uh, we did uh, for that one is basically you have this registration, you know that you have so many people in there, in that kind of system, uh, and you probably know that kind of calculation. Uh, if you have a big network, there is this network effect, so you have a kind of a value because of that network effect. So some say it's uh, it's, it's n squared, so number of people uh, times power of 2, I think, in English. And some say it's the n log n. Uh, so we took the n log n to be on the safe side for the value of the, of the network. Uh, and just uh, make sure that basically the coin increase is below the network value increase. So basically the coin will still increase in value. Uh, because of the increase of value of the network. So that's the, uh, the, the calculation behind the release schedule of those coins within that kind of system. Um, I think it's, it's clear, if I say, if you're building on Ethereum, the things which you can build for Ethereum, you can also build for Altis. Yeah, so you, if you're a small contract programmer, you can use those, can deploy them on Altis just the same way as, as you can, can do here. So what's the schedule? The schedule is actually, uh, we are looking for a closed funding round uh, in March and for starting uh, the uh, a pre-registration in April and the open uh, coin distribution in exchange for crypto, maybe even fiat in May. That's the current schedule. So it depends on a couple of more factors, but that's what we're currently planning for. So now I'm open for questions. Um, what is the initial volume in, in fiat or Ethereum that you're aiming to raise in the early phase? Well, it, the, um, so you see here 3 billion, so basically 1.2. 5 billion would be kind of given away and uh, and if all those 1.5 go uh, are distributed it would be 22.5 million euro yes you're planning to do an ICO or to distribute the notes via virtual uh, well, I wouldn't call it ICO because it's such a bashing word. Um, uh, so, therefore, uh, let's call it a coin distribution in exchange for euros. Okay. <laughs> uh, are there any ideas for a, con uh, for a consensus algorithm? Because I don't think you said it or... No, I wanted to say if it's proof of work or proof of stake or. Oh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, tendermint. So basically, uh, it's uh, already built-in consensus mechanism, which uh, has has basically a finality uh, right when the block is defined. Ah, oh, that's uh, the human part. Or, or no, it's uh, it's just you know there are it's it's a we will build it like a proof of stake but basically it's something in between proof of stake and proof of authority let's say um, but the consensus is 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 a, a butantine fault tolerance mechanism where you actually uh, if there is a consensus it's a final consensus so you can't change it it's not like probabilistic like you have in proof of work uh, and uh, it has advantages and disadvantages in our case 
finality is a very interesting or is a kind of important feature because uh, when we have streams, we really want to know at a certain point how much money somebody has. And therefore, finality is, is an important part for the consensus. Uh, with the, how will the streams exactly look like? Are they like a contract? A contract that is basically paying an amount of money over time, or is it like another contract? Uh, well, the, the proof of concept is, is done within a, a smart contract. Uh, so you actually see uh, the, the inflow of coins on a particular address, and it's, you you see uh, see the change with every block update. Okay. So basically, uh, what Didi is sitting over there. So if you want to go into very details, you have to approach him. Um, so uh, basically, you see uh, all the, the 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 flow coming in and. If you're looking at the wallet, you, you see all the time changing numbers on your account. Okay. But well, basically, if you took like, a snapshot at a certain time spent, you would have like exact and final amounts. Yeah, uh, you know, as long as the stream is open, everything, all the time, something comes in. So if you're saying you're closing a stream, of course, then, then it will be finalized. Okay. Is it hard to get a, a permissionless? Um, blockchain on a world, if there is a part of uh, proof, proof of authority, so how is it planned? Is it no, it's, uh, you know, it's like uh, starting a proof of stake right from scratch. Right from scratch is kind of a, um, a kind of dangerous activity. So uh, and uh, and we need to make sure that at the very beginning uh, we are having a sufficient kind of stake there that you can really make it completely permissionless yeah. uh, or make it sufficiently permissionless. You know, it's like even Bitcoin is not permissionless. If the node behaves badly, they are blacklisted and they are not considered anymore. But, but are you planning to, to um, check their identity, for instance, for, for people who try to, to, um, to be part of this, of this project and uh, run their own node? Because some, um, yeah. Yeah, um, what what we actually discussed, but it's not not kind of finally decided, is is for example something like this. There is a hidden identity uh, stored, and if somebody is behaving very badly, and the uh, and the um, uh, the uh, distributed governance decides that they're going to reveal that identity, it might be that that person or that organization will never be able to enter the artist network again. Mm -hmm. So something like that mm -hmm. is in our minds. Yeah. And, uh, so basically anybody can run a note and note as long as they're behaving. Yes, after the, uh, the bootstrap phase. After the, after the so the bootstrap phase will be a year. Um, regarding the streaming payment, uh, so did I understand correctly that you not just at the beginning and then record the money, but in each block? Uh, well, you will get with each block, you will see kind of the change in your wallet. But it's not recorded on the blockchain. No, there is no no transaction happening on the okay, blockchain. So it's really but just it's a it's an on chain activity. So basically, the 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 activity is happening on chain. So it's not like Lightning or Raiden off-chain, it's on-chain. So uh, basically you don't have to monitor it like you probably have to do for the others. Uh, because, you know, uh, the ones which are uh, Lightning or Raiden, basically you still have to look if the other one is closing the channel while, he's, while he's, he can make a fraudulent activity with the last transaction in, in, those, kind of, uh, in those kind of systems. But if you're looking at on-chain, basically you can't do that. So you open kind of the, the stream, you start the stream, and then it's flowing, and at some point you close the stream. Those are the three transactions that might be needed. But no transactions in between, no. it's just calculated. Okay. So what's the time frame for the creation of the 21 billion coins? And so what's the end date when all the coins have been generated? That's depending very much on the on the growth of the network. So if the network is growing extremely fast, and we're talking about 
uh, our kind of calculation or simulation, what we what we did was a kind of a S curve, uh, basically having a slower start and then a very rapid increase. Also taking into consideration that current blockchains are having difficulties with kind of bigger numbers. So you're chaining that on the identities that are in the network. Yeah, and, and you know it's like the question how many transactions they do and how many services are on there as well. But uh, the, the calculation just taking into consideration that you can handle the load. So it's the still kind of here, you know, it's like everybody's talking about sharding and and, and other kind of scaling possibilities. Uh, but just putting that aside and saying, okay, they will be solved in three years, four years time. Um, then uh, it would, the calculation is up to 250 million registered members in the system within 10 years. Then it would hit the 21 billion in 10 years. It's hard to believe for me still, but it's a calculation as it as is. So we have to put some numbers in there. Why did you decide to stop the the total amount of coins at like twenty one billion and not make like a, after it's they are given out like make a yearly inflation of say zero point five percent to regulate the coin price? Because if the project keeps going and going, the price will increase naturally, and this might. It's a it's a kind of a kind of a trade off, you know. It's like uh, a lot of people are kind of ruined by the twenty one million of Bitcoin. So uh, they know, okay, well, this is a limited amount of supply and so on. So, but there are a couple of other ideas you can think of uh, at the very end. So people will, whatever we do, they will partially lose their private keys. So we could think after some time saying, okay, if funds are completely immovable, they're kind of, uh, uh, then at some point you get a demorage on those kind of accounts and that demorage would, would increase. You burn that kind of money and you re-release it to the system. And, uh, and you can think of a couple of more things actually to still have a circulating uh, coin supply without having this kind of difficulty of, okay, well, nothing is coming into the system, but still, you know, it's like we're starting with three, 3 billion, 21 billion is really quite an, a large amount, and it's very much depending on how many people are registered in the system. So, uh, 10 years is really a, a very optimistic guess, I think. So, this is like, uh, so, I, you know, it's like, if we're hitting those 21 million within 10 years, uh, this will be an incredible change. So it's like, don't get me wrong. This is like, boom, yeah. Nothing, nothing out there can 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 show something similar right now. Uh, a question on the on the reason behind it. So, in general, I can appreciate that there is a difference, but in general, I do see the idea of the stream as a sort of like. Um, basically a regular payment, if we're talking just about payments. Well, why do you feel that um, the stream is... Why did you decide to use the stream uh, as an idea as opposed to simply um, basing something on just the Ethereum blockchain itself? Yeah, the, um, all the, it opens a way to do completely different kind of business models, which are extremely... Uh, well, all these kind of service-oriented business models without caring anymore. So basically you can, uh, you can without causing load on the blockchain as well, but uh, uh, let's just uh, take into consideration and that what we discussed was something like having a flat rate for all kind of things and saying, okay, I'm paying a flat rate for, for, uh, for not just telecom, but also uh, for, let's say, my traveling activities. And, uh, and I'm paying like, I don't know, 100 euros and I can travel wherever I want. And uh, it's just uh, allowing service providers building a kind of a service platform and diverting uh, kind of that uh, our people actually paying uh, within a stream and they can be quite many uh, without causing a big load on the blockchain and not having these kind of oh, we can't scale the blockchain problem 
uh, and I think it's now it's really important to have those ideas implemented and see different kind of approaches for doing also a contribution to the scaling debate and uh, they we have to go on protocol level if we are not going on protocol level uh, it's just a smart contract on Ethereum uh, and uh, there you can't really influence that much you can't yeah, of course you can do an improvement proposal and it might be implemented in a couple of months or years uh, but basically you're not as free to decide on what is actually important and especially the business models I think you can create completely new things if you're using a stream instead of a incremental payment or a regular payment or something like that. Hmm. Thank you. So I just one question, I don't know if I missed it out, but are it still possible to do normal transactions on this bot? Sure. Okay. sure. So you had, as a customer, you have corporations in mind that basically mostly have recurring payments from users as a use case, as a first use case, or which other use cases did you have in mind that you came up with the flow? Yeah, you know, it's like, um, it could be even down to your parking payment. So he did just the other day with made the idea is basically you start your payment, the stream is flowing, you stop your payment, the stream is stopped. Uh, and of course it could be those kind of typical service oriented regular payments where you say I'm having that server at that company, I'm paying this much per whatever. And uh, and maybe maybe one thing which is I think an important part and what we are currently working on as well is having a connection to the banking system as it is so basically having in your wallet uh, 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 basically a crypto euro which is one-to-one -one connected to your bank account so that you can actually handle uh, uh, something which is one-to-one -one exchangeable to euro and which can be completely automated so that you can say, okay, well, I've always liked 100 crypto euro in my wallet. Uh, I get around and I can pay with that. Uh, and everybody who receives that can use that crypto euro and change it back to a normal euro if they need it. But if it's done well, I think it will just stay there. So nobody will kind of exchange that because he already knows I can exchange that, but that's already enough. I think you. Are there any transaction fees involved? So inside the stream, or is it just to pay a little fee to open the stream, like this? Yeah, it's already? just for all the transactions. So basically, when you open it, when you start it, so that's happening separately, and when you close it, so in those, uh, at that time, you have to pay a transaction fee. Okay, and what are the speed limits? So what what is the limit of the transactions, or the the stream you can? The amount of money you can exchange. That depends basically on uh, on the on the kind of what you're doing. So let's let's assume you have a hundred coins. Uh, uh, you have a hundred coins uh, in your account, and you're saying uh, I stream ten coins per day. So it would last for uh, for ten days. Um, you could all. Hmm? Yeah. And how the limit is? Uh, you have. You have to have funds for at least one minute. That's kind of that's somehow arbitrary. Yeah, it's so a question of how much funds you have. have a lot of speed. So you know. Okay, but what if I say I have like a hundred coins and I send like the smallest amount which I can send, and then the time is about one minute, and then there would be a lot of value exchanges. You know what I mean? I. I don't get it because you started still not with whatever kind of flow rate and that will give you kind of a time limit until your account is empty. Oh, okay. And uh, and what Didi just said basically you need to have at least for one minute a stream or we will define how much money should be in your account that basically you, you can start the stream. Uh, for a certain flow rate. So that's that's okay. kind of, we need to put limitations in there. We are also discussing about kind of the possibility to go negative. It doesn't create any money, it would be a debt, a debt towards somebody else. 
and it could be possible that some contracts just allow that because you know I'm a service let's say I'm an energy company and you you pay your regular energy bill or you pay as a flow towards me and I say well if you have problems with payments uh, you're allowed to go two months of payments negative then the contract is cancelled so uh, and within a month you have again money and you put some money there and it's immediately on my account so that could be an interesting option to give a crypto system more flexibility uh, what you currently not have if you don't have a coin you can't buy something and this one could open more flexibility for the system as well <laughs> <laughs> I have a question concerning the IDs. How do you want to create this unique identity? Well, the, the starting is actually a, a very simple concept which was uh, presented by, by uh, MIT researchers in 2008, I think. Uh, that's happening in a sign-on party. So like, like you know from crypto parties or something like that. So basically you have a, a, a trusted entity, you go there, you have to be there physically and uh, you have to be there on a certain time. Uh, and because you can't clone your body, uh, it's, it's hard for you to go like to Vienna where the other party is within that time frame. Uh, and if there would be still the possibility, it's still the question how much money you, you could get and does it, is it worth it? And if we want to still avoid that one, we could mark your body like they do in Africa when they do the voting. You get a, a black finger or something, so uh, everybody else can uh, see that basically you have been already registered. Okay. So that's the, that's the starting point, but we're discussing a little bit more elaborate <laughs> kind of things as well. Maybe let's use geometrics and stuff like yeah, that instead of cutting people. Yeah, no, but, you know, it's a black finger is not really hurting much. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not talk talking about this like. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I, send, if I understand correctly, you basically have your user account or your address, and this is fixed. So, do you have what do you uh, plan to do because of the privacy concerns that naturally arise if you always have like the same stream, say you have like six ongoing payments and they all come from the same address, right? Because you are registered. And other than are those clear transactions? Can everybody see where those transactions are going? Or are they like is something like Ring CPUs the nobody can really see where the transactions go? Well I um so ring ring signatures so far we have not discussed, um, but uh, it will be a similar thing like uh, basically you have in Bitcoin and Ethereum right now. Uh, we are looking more into zero knowledge uh, proof what you could do with those, but there uh, if you're bringing some specific knowledge in that one, uh, I think we could appreciate some help there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure, sure, of course. Um, uh, what I should say is basically if you do that registration, it's completely anonymous. So it's not kind of a, you know, it's not checking your, your IDs and documenting it somewhere and all these kind of things. Of course, but the typical mistakes you can make yourself, pay with something and they can identify you and then you can trace it back. Of course, yes, yeah, that could happen in the current Discussion. So it's not like a KYC? Uh, no, 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 sure not. No, of course not. No, no, no. Apple TV, it's all fine. Um, are the streams really time continuous or are they discrete on a very small time scale? Time continuous. Okay. So it's a calculated value what you have actually. It's really like a function, function of time. Uh, first of all, I think the idea of streams is quite good, in particular since everybody seems to be moving towards a subscription, ranking, etc. Uh, but the other question, you mentioned um, at the beginning that you want to kind of, uh, it's for humans. So is your idea to evenly distribute it or what do you mean with that? Um, well, you know, it's like if you're taking a crypto system and you're taking 75% of the coins, of the total amount of coins, and distribute it 
or it's really unique humans, that's kind of a novel kind of thing. It's very new. The, the, you know, my basic intention is that it will open kind of those service markets to a, a much better uh, kind of group of people. Because if you're going on a crypto system, you always need the base coin to do something on it. So it's nice that, you know, you may have played for play for privacy, but if you don't have Ether, you cannot move those tokens. Uh, so if, uh, if a company is, is actually uh, doing a, a kind of service-based model uh, and uh, their customers uh, could use uh, a token on that system, but they cannot move it because they don't have the base coin, uh, then it's kind of meaningless because they have to go to a crypto exchange getting some base coins. Uh, or have a friend who has a has those. So therefore, the reason to distribute those is really broadening the, the possibility that people can actually use that kind of system. And using, I mean, using tokens on top of it, uh, not necessarily the base coin. So having a base coin really for transaction fees and maybe small kind of payments for those kind of things. But you're saying it's still an exchange, right? I mean, so it's the same thing as if I go somewhere if I. Or, um, yeah, but if you're, you know, it's like if you're going getting them for free. Uh, no, um, that, that's the beginning. Selling the 1.5 billion, that's kind of giving it in exchange for yours. But if you're going to one of those sign-on parties, you get them for free because basically you are a unique human. You will get some stream of those coins for free. You don't have to buy them. But I mean, to be kind of the devil's advocate here, um, some people can handle money, some not. So in the end, it will always happen that the money goes to one place. Yeah, let's 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 hope some people will keep their coins. So it's like, <laughs> I, you know, it's like this is why it will be a stream. It will not be like giving yeah, away a million to everyone. It, it, but it, it will helps. get a stream, and during yeah. the time you will basically get yeah. the okay. Let's let's hope yeah. that <laughs> during that time they get the stream. They also learn that they are not immediately giving it away when they get it. <laughs> Okay, well, I think I have already exceeded my time quite severely, and I would like to hand over to Peter, uh, and thank you for your questions.